Hello. My name is Dr. Andrew Michaels. And I am here to help you. So, what brings you here today? Mm -hmm. You need a little trim, just a little off the top. Mm -hmm. Just a little on the side. Come on. Come on. Slide in. These are good. Steel. I hope you like them. Let's start at the top. Mm -hmm. Just a little right here on the side. How do you feel? Hmm. I feel good. Trim it along the top. You can close your eyes if you're worried. I won't hurt you. You know that. work across the top of your hairline. You're doing so well. Hold still. Do you want me to? 
to trim the nose hairs just a little. Alright. Oh, with these you could trim a whisker on a gnat's ass. They're so fine. Still, I'll do the other nostril. Oh, you gotta hold still. Good. Good. And you want your eyebrows trimmed? still now. Let's do this eyebrow first. Brush it off. Yeah, and then this side. I get lost in thought sometimes. You know what I think about sometimes? The good old days, yeah. Don't you all just love the good old days? Yep. You know what I like best? That might surprise you. You'd think I would wax on about the past. Missed my glory days of my younger years. But that's not the case. You see, right now, right now, this moment, oh, So much is happening. So much is changing. Switch them. It feels so good to be alive right now. I remember the good old days, you know? thing you said and you offended this person and that person. Sounds a lot like now, doesn't it? You had to respect your elders even though they were horrible people. They were absolutely horrible, horrible people. And we had to take it from them for a little while. You know, I want to talk to you about something that's bothering me. I am a tween generation. Mm -hmm. My parents were too, believe it or not. They were part of what was called the silent generation. My parents came before the baby boom generation. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. This is 
the tinnier sound. I know, I gotta get back on that hair right there. Hold still. And I was Generation X. We got blamed for everything. All the mistakes of the baby boom generation. We got blamed for all of it. What they didn't blame on their parents. Yeah, the greatest generation ever. And those from the silent generation. Whatever they couldn't blame on them, they blamed on us. That's right. The baby boom generation. See, they had the population. <coughs> And they controlled the vote my entire life until now. You see, there's this little group of people called the Millennials, and they have toppled the baby boom generation from attrition, basically. The baby boom generation outranked everyone by population and vote and controlled the direction of this country for the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. And then they got replaced just these last few years by the Millennials. They outrank them and between the Millennials and Generation X we control the vote. First time in 50 something years. Now here's the fun part about the baby boom generation. They were this humongous group of petulant, spoiled, filthy, ungrateful brats. Every last one of them. I can talk pretty openly about them because very little of my audience is baby boom generation. They're too good to watch this. Mm -hmm. I have a few baby boom fans and friends and they know I'm not speaking necessarily directly about them, but they know I'm, I'm correct in what I'm about to say. Back in the 60s, they had everything going for them, late 50s, 60s. They had one income families, a lot of them. And daddy worked, and mommy stayed home and wiped their noses and their arses. You look good. You look good. You really are starting to look good. I hope you like this haircut. And the barbershop talk. Yeah. And then, you know, they got up to the age where they had to go to do adult things like Vietnam and college. And <clears throat> now, Vietnam was a very, very bad situation. So they did the right thing. They protested and they uh, became what was called the counter culture. Whatever anybody over 30 said, they didn't want to hear it. Which is fine. They were rebellious. They burned their draft cards. They burned their bras. They became feminists, draft dodgers, free love. You know, they got into drugs. They, uh, they would run away to Canada. Those are my favorite ones, the ones that ran away to Canada. Then came back and became right-wingers. <laughs> Those are my favorite. I love them. Those are my favorites. Boy, they ran. They ran. But when they got back, and they know who I'm talking about, oh, they couldn't wait to get on that old conservative bandwagon now that they aren't going to get drafted anymore. Great people. Great people. Oh, you should know them. They're wonderful people. Let's see. And, uh, they weren't happy with marriage. Uh, that was bullcrap. Free love, right? Flower children. You know, all that crap. So the divorce rate went from like nothing in this country to 50%. Yeah. In a generation, basically. Because they aren't going to put up with that. They're going to get married anytime they want. Divorced, whatever they want. And uh, that's where the latchkey kids came from. And then they weren't happy with pregnancy. That was out the door. So they uh, they they got the whole Roe v. Wade thing coming in. That was the baby boomers, you know. Then so they had uh, they had their free love, divorce, uh, abortion, draft dodging, uh, busting everybody's personal property up, 
you know, because they're going to take it to the streets, take it to the man, you know, and uh, they were going to change this world. And then the 80s came along, 70s and 80s. They were raising us, Generation X. And then they decided they were going to just basically, well, they had to, they had to do something because they've been divorced. They've had uh, paid for or had several abortions at this point. Um, you know, they had drug addictions and stuff from the cocaine and all their disco teching and, you know, and, uh, you know, they never grew up because they were too busy smoking the Mary, uh, Jane, the marijuana. And, uh, they were neglecting their kids because they were just out running the roads, having sex with random people and, uh, all that crap and, uh, living the high life and, Voting Republican, voting conservative as much as they could, bossing everybody around. You know, they found Jesus. Now they found Jesus, and uh, they became ultra religious. Mm -hmm. These same yokels, you know, this same Looney Tunes that were just like ten years before laying naked in a pile of mud at Woodstock. Now they're all found with Jesus, and they're gonna have Sky Daddy fix all their children's problems from ADHD and autism and everything else, you know, latchkey kids that were totally neglected and they can't figure out why the kids are the way they are, you know, and then, of course, they didn't spare the rod because it worked for them, and if it was good enough for them, then they are going to really whoop on you. They're going to knock the devil out of you. Knock the devil out of you. That was your baby boom generation. Mm -hmm. Oh, they loved to whoop on some kids with those yardsticks and paddles and mm -hmm. oh they were great i know i just did a paddling video isn't that funny yeah kind of you know i'm not a baby boomer though don't blame me for it so they found jesus and they're gonna get a and i'm not slamming religion here a lot of people believe and a lot of people have religion but they're gonna fix it see because they're part of the silent they even started telling them who they are, how to vote, and what to do to fix everything in this country. Fix it. They're going to fix it. They're going to fix it. Not like their mom and dad. No, no, no. Their parents, they went out and defeated, you know, Z Heil and all that that went over in Europe. They, they defeated the, the Fuhrer and uh, they conquered communism in the Cold War. That's not for them. They're going to conquer. They're going to save our eternal souls by telling us rock and roll is bad. That's right. So they would have these setups where they would tell you there's going to be fun stuff to do at the church. And they would have these TV set up. This is back in the good old days, back in the 80s. And you'd show up and they'd have these TV sets, monitors, all up at the front of the church. And they would show you this hour long, hour and a half long, wretched documentary on how ACDC stood for alter, uh, Antichrist Demonic Control. That's what ACDC stands for. And how Jim Morrison had a devil or a demon in him and he died. And drugs are bad and rock and roll's bad and you're all going to go to hell. And, you know, you've got demons in you. I'm talking demons, baby. They were going to get, they were going to knock the devil out of you. And uh, then you thought, well, it can't get any worse than this. They hate rock and roll, whatever. They said the band Eagles was bad. That was my favorite. The band Eagles. And I guess they were a little demonic when they got Joe Walsh involved with them. But the guy can play. I mean, what are you going to do? And then, uh, let's see. I digress. So now, we're not allowed to have drugs. We're not allowed to have rock and roll, because that's bad. We're not allowed to divorce. We're not allowed to have abortions. You gotta get rid of abortion, because it's bad. See, because they figured it out, because they used it. So they, and then, you know, you've gotta be an ultra patriot. So you have to serve. You have to go fight in Desert Storm. You have to fight in all their bullshit wars. You know, that they were too busy running to Canada to fight. And I'm telling the truth. I know some of these guys, you know, and they are as hardcore as they can get now. Oh, they talk a lot of smack. A 
about these kids. They're always bad mouthing these millennials. How these kids like my kids age and younger, they got nothing nice to say about them. You know how lazy they are. <clears throat> you know, they they got rid of all the pension schemes and hospitalization. And that went out the window with, with them. You know, you had to pay more for everything. You know, and uh, wages went to crap. And, you know, they were like, you know, me, me, me. All for me. And nothing for anybody else. And they ran up debt and they spent all their parents' inheritance. You know, all the money their parents left them. So there's nothing left for their kids, nothing left for their grandkids. But they're going to save your soul. Because that's eternal. See, they know they screwed this up right here. But they're going to save your soul. <laughs> that's right. And they're going to get rid of abortion. So you're not allowed to have a divorce. Uh, abortion. You uh, should be happy with the money you're making. Uh, you're lazy. So, I don't understand how that works. We're lazy, but we're working for less money. But we should be happy because you got a job. Um, and uh, you don't take your kids to church enough. So, they're going to turn out to be heathens. And God's going to punish you for four generations. And I'm sitting there like, oh my God. This person back in the 70s and 80s paid for abortions. Got multiple divorces. Was sleeping with everybody they could get their hands on. Their kids raise themselves. Um, now you're going to tell me. You're, you're going to tell us. Okay. All right. Okay. So, the good old days. Now they're dying. And they want to snuff this planet out. They're telling you, the same people, that the environment's totally okay and it's all made up they're telling you that the end is here the end times are here that god's going to come down and sky daddy's just going to blow the whole thing to to hell it's over and they're telling you all this crap that we're all going to die and the end is here yet they're hoarding food in their cellars they're hoarding guns and ammunition and uh They've got five locks on their doors, and they're not leaving any money for their children to inherit. And then they want to tell you they've racked up humongous debt. And then they're, like, sitting there going, like, telling you that you're not a good Christian or you're not a good holy person. And you're like, if, and this is my problem, and maybe somebody can help me with this. Okay. The world's going to end, right? And if I'm wrong, help me out. Tell me down in the comments below. I just, I, if the world's going to end, what good is the guns, the ammo, and the food and the water going to do when it's tits up and over? Like, if they crack Cleveland, Ohio, and New York with an atomic bomb, everything in between is going to be toast. You can have all the oatmeal and nacho chips stored in your garage with you know buckets of spaghettios you ain't gonna make it okay just letting you know just in case nobody's ever told you when the end is nigh you're gonna die that's it so what you should do if you know they're dropping a bomb <coughs> is kiss your parents goodbye <coughs> drive straight to where the bomb is supposed to land and uh, look straight up in the air and go hallelujah take me Jesus because it's over <laughs> it's over you want to get it over with as quick as possible yeah all the all the uh, stored food and all that ammunition where do you think all these people from the big cities and uh, um, packed suburbs when they go out into the countryside looking for food and water and they're desperate and they're dying of radiation poisoning and there's thousands of them they're gonna just rampage your house it doesn't matter how many guns and bullets you have you know and they're gonna have guns and bullets too and the harder you fight they know there's more food there don't you think isn't this scary stuff i love it i love talking like this because i love watching 
living for the time I've lived 55 years. And I'm living in the time of watching the baby boom generation, this generation that totally tried to wreck this great nation, the United States of America, is finally fading from power. And soon we will elect somebody from the younger generation that will finally, finally end their reign over the population of this great fine nation. And the world will be a better freaking place. Hallelujah. Now that's something to say hallelujah over. Can I get an amen? I didn't hear an amen out of you back there. Or you. Come on. All right. Hallelujah. And think about it. They don't care if we have Social Security because the world's going to end. So we don't need Social Security. We don't need clean water. We don't need to take care of the environment. We don't have to worry about over drilling, destroying our water tables, corporate greed, none of that stuff. Because it doesn't matter because they're going to use it all up and then nuke us out. Because if they can't have it, you can't have it. And that's been their motto since 1959. If they can't have it, you can't have it. Now, you might wonder why I bother saying things like this in a video like this. Because I think there's a huge group of you that appreciate this. You appreciate the fact that I tell you the truth. That I show you things that maybe others would be afraid to talk about. And I say it in a relaxing and calm way. And you think these people, these people that raise these petulant brats, they stopped the Third Reich. They stopped the excess powers. They took down Japan and made them a friend to the United States, a trading partner, turned Japan and Germany into two of the most powerful democracies, powerful economies in the world. And they brought the evil Soviet Union to its knees without barely firing a shot. You know, we could argue that out. Vietnam and Korea were hardly barely a shot. And so was Afghanistan. But the point is... Ooh, tummy. Look at all the good things the baby boom generation brought in. They brought in Roe v. Wade and had that rammed up our ass for the next 45 years. They took divorce rates to 50% failure. That was nice of them. Latchkey kids. Let's see, what else? Um, they started pushing their agenda of, the, uh, of a theocracy. You know, overthrowing the United States government to install a Christian theocracy that would go back to Leviticus law, where women have no rights, slavery's legal. Yeah, and if somebody rapes your daughter, they can uh, pay you a couple of shekels of silver and then marry her. Yeah, that's what they want. And if they can't have it, if they can't have it, they'll watch this world burn. And they'll take you to hell with them. And that's what they think of us. And that's what they've always thought of us. Just go back and look how they voted. Look at what they did. Look at all the cultural upheaval of the last 50 years. Where did it start? Where did it go? Where is it at right now? And look who's at the head of it. And if you don't agree with me, I'm sorry.
I just want you to think about it. I don't want you to agree with me. I'm past trying to convince people. It doesn't matter. But what I do want you to do is I want you to think. I want you to think about it. And I want you to know I meant no harm. And I meant no disrespect towards your grandma, or your mother, your father, or your grandpappy. I know where my grandfather was. And I even know where my dad was. When the chips went down, I know what they had to do, and they did. All you boomers. Oh, I know about you, too. I had to eat your garbage for 50 years. And then I watched, why are they, all this stuff about millennials in the news constantly? What's all this millennial stuff? I didn't understand it. Then I found out where it was coming from. These millennials don't listen. They don't care what you have to say. They're not taking any of your crap. I don't know what that must be like. What that must be like. I love it. I absolutely love it. Life's a bitch. And then you die. Oh well. They'll get over it. <laughs> you look wonderful. Look at you. You look absolutely fabulous. Mm, how do you feel? You look great. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you. You look smashing. Let me brush you off a little bit. There you go. I'll tell you what. I want you to take care of yourself. And when I see you again soon, okay? We're really going to have some fun. All right? No more of this silly boomer talk, right? Good. We'll get back to some fun stuff. But I bet I made a few of you laugh out there. Until then, have a most blessed day, okay? Oh, I love you guys. I really do. Hey, even if I'm not 100% correct, maybe I made some mistakes in what I've told you today from base place of love I love you guys I want you to be strong I want you to determine your own future and I want you to do better than we did <laughs>